So going back approximately 10 months ago, when Hawke, myself, Hawke, and some of the North American management team were sitting together, we really drew our inspiration to set in today's summit, really from the perspective that when we look back about three or four years, we saw that the trading environment that we Tetra Pak, we collectively, uh, the industry, had gone through some relatively difficult times because of the macroeconomics. At the same time, when we look forward right, to how 2013 and 14 will be, I think we anticipate that the world and the environment and geographies that we collectively operate in will still also be somewhat challenging, both from an economic point of view and also in terms of intensi intensified competition. So from that thinking was born the theme for the summit, um, redefining reality. And if I bring that down to, to really what is it that we're wanting to bring home here in the next 24 hours, it's you know, how can we collectively win more confidently in a competitive uh, market environment. If we look back over the last couple of years, we actually see some stand-up examples of companies who have thrived through these difficult economic times. And if I was to draw out a couple of examples that are closer to um, the reality that we're collectively operating in, um, if I take the retail e example, uh, the likes of Whole Foods and the natural food channels, right? Uh, this is an example of a, of, of a retail environment that has really bucked the economic trend, you know, and they've sported some 20 plus percent growth. Um, in the last number of years, which is you know, relatively unheard of um, in the context of that size of, of business. And if we bring it back a little bit, bit closer to home, it's the, it's the ambient um, nutritional uh, products, it's the organic food type uh, products, and um, a range of innovation in, in dairy applications and things, which is where we're really seeing sort of growth in our respective industries. So the good news is, right, in difficult economic times, uh, there are distinct opportunities and there's opportunities for companies like ourselves to really buck the trend, right, and defy the difficult economy. So <clears throat> some observations I've had in my very fortunate career with Tetra Pak, uh, where I've had the, the, the privilege to live in five countries and the privilege before coming to North America to travel in over 100 countries and having a lot, a lots of observations of, of, of um, companies within our industry and, and outside, some of the observations I see is that there's some real commonalities with what I would define as a high growth company. And if you take the image on the screen here for the moment, I just ask you to individually to reflect, what, what do you see, okay? Now, some of us will see a woman, some will see a man, some may not see either. And um, the point here is that high growth companies have an artistic strength of being able to see a multitude of possibilities. And they do this through both focus and imagination. They build a focus and imagination uh, through the culture of their organization, and they really embed this in the context of an innovative culture. And by being able to see the different possibilities, they can then selectively choose which ones to back their money on, which ones not, and they'll play some multiple uh, cards, and generally, though, with a high degree of probability, they will win. So I think the first message here is that having focus and imagination during difficult economic times is really one of the keys to ensure that you unlock the creativity and focus in an organization to be able to drive that uh, growth engine. So with that as an introductory frame, We've framed up um, basically five key themes that we think 
have a relatively high degree of relevance when you're looking to redefine reality or when you're looking to really optimize um, what you're doing from a growth perspective. And not in any order of importance, we'd call out that speed, right, in this time and age really matters. That age or market segmentation is becoming fundamentally even more critical. And that having what I call a global mindset, and I'll come back to this, we feel is becoming increasingly important even if you're only operating in one national geography. And that having the ability to have your organization and particularly your staff to overcome uncertainty is a critical component to success. And of course, there's no question, the obvious one, and John will go into uh, this in depth, um, that innovation certainly matters. So the thinking now is for the next 20 minutes or so that I'll very quickly step through each of these five to give some tangible examples on how we think or feel uh, these areas can contribute to us. And as Dominic said, to also help frame up the, uh, the scope over the next 24 hours uh, with the other speakers. So let's start with speed, okay? This is not a chart that we're meant to read, read in detail, but along the x-axis here, here what, what we have done is we have mapped a number of key innovations that have effectively had an impact right, on the world since base, basically the, the fourth millennium BC, right, through to modern and current times. And really the purpose of this uh, part of the chart is to say, if you look to the right part, of the slide, what we're seeing is a complete compression in the number of innovations and things that are coming to market in the current time that we're living. And I think this, the so what of that, and we, we all feel this, is that the compression of speed that is being put on our organizations right through the value chain, whether it be from retailers, whether from consumers, or as a result of the competition, is really substantially more demanding today than what it was 10 years ago and time before that. So if we step back also and think to ourselves, okay, on the globe, we have a total of 7 billion or a little over 7 billion people. Now, when we talk about the internet, the internet is having such a phenomenal impact, um, not just on individuals, but also on the business world. And if we just take <clears throat> the example of, of Google, who, who knows roughly how many Google searches there are done per day today on a global basis? Seven billion people, there is three billion Google searches done. Okay, so what does that mean for us? within our industries? Well, <clears throat> it means that things are moving much, much, much faster. Um, as we speak, individuals are self-innovating, self-educating, comparing prices, comparing products, and there's a whole range of things that are happening on a global basis that, that can impact our business. And this also then translates <clears throat> very much into another philosophy, and that is that the fast are eating the slow, okay? If we take, for example, the, the music industry, it was in our lifetime where we all had records at home and they were uh, effectively um, eaten up by the CD. The CD was eaten up by the MP3 player and of course the iTunes and the likes of iTunes have now eaten up the CD.